Uh, hi. Uh, welcome to Authors and Artists Festival Rewilding. And uh, thank you to our sponsors who are Rescue Poetics, Mary King, Kathy Kremens, and the New England Grassroots Environment Fund. Uh, with help from SCORE, the Nature Imaginarium, and Human Error Publishing. The festival is brought to you by Nature Culture, um, and we're honored to have published uh, The Way of Gaia and also these next two books, uh, Land Trust by Catherine Hagopian Berry and uh, From Root to Seed, edited by Sama Adurakeep. And you'll hear from some of the Root to Seed authors as well in this session. So I will turn it over to uh, our two poets and friends, Catherine Hagopian Berry and Sama Adurki. Welcome, let me spotlight myself here one moment. Okay. Welcome everyone. Kate, it's really good to see you. Wonderful to see you. Thank you. So um so we have an hour here together and um Kate and I are gonna kind of frame this session. So we we thought we'd um just begin by introducing ourselves and introducing our, our books and then um I'm gonna introduce the the poets that we'll be hearing from today from the collection. And I'll read their bios and we'll, you know, bring them onto the onto the screen when it's time. Um, Kate, do you wanna wanna say some things about your, yourself and your and your book? <laughs> Thank you, Sana. I'm Catherine Hagopian Berry. I'm the author of Land Trust. Nature Culture Publishing 2022. Um, the beautiful Martin Bridge piece on my cover is seven times if you were tuning in to the last session. Um, I am the author of three books of poetry, my first Mast Year, my second Land Trust, and my third is Orbit, just out from Toad Hall Editions. And I live and write in Bridgeton, Maine. Thank you, Kate. So I'm Samat Abdurraki. My pronouns are she, her, um, and hers. And I live on Wabanaki territory here in Maine. I live in in, um, in Brunswick, which is actually ancestral homelands of the Abenaki people. Um, and I'm the editor of this lovely collection, which is From Root to Seed, uh, uh, Black, Brown, and Indigenous Poets Write the Northeast. And this is the barn owl that, that Lisa was just mentioning on the, that graces the cover. It's really, really beautiful. Um, and um, let's see, my work can be found in other Writing the Land um, uh, collections, um, Writing the Land Maine, and most recently, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it right now, Cross, cross Currents or Cross Streams. Streamlines, excuse me. And then I've you can also find my work in Bigger Than Bravery, Black, Black Resilience and Reclamation in a Time of Pandemic. Um, and I have a, a chat book called Each Day is Like an Anchor. Um, it's wonderful to be here with Kate. Uh, I worked with Kate while she was working on Land Trust. I got to read the the beautiful, the entire collection and we talked, we talked about the, the structure and the order. And it was really wonderful to be able to, to collaborate, um, collaborate with Kate on her, on her project. And it was really wonderful to get some feedback from Kate on, on this, this project. So um, anything else you want to say, Kate? Be, you know. Sure. Um, you know, it's funny, right? Because the land acknowledgement for Bridgeton is so interesting. I usually tend to save it for a poem where Wabanaki, Wabanaki, Abenaki, and Pequawket, um, in Bridgeton, which makes total sense when you think about it, right? Because there are all these lakes. Bridgeton is known for having five lakes. And you can just get this sense that all of our beautiful, like, Indigenous people were using this region to kind of move and communicate with each other, right, as they move through their lives. So... I don't know. It always makes me think there's a poem in there that I haven't written yet. And I got nervous and forgot to say I'm she, her, hers for those watching. Um, 
you know, what's fascinating about the project of collaboration is how beautiful and fertile and rich it is to share words with other poets and to realize that sometimes it feels like you're all coming together to voice in very unique ways, like a really kind of similar set of concerns, like there are resonances. And to me, that's the most magical part, you know, moving from my book and from root to seed and all of these different poets and all of these different voices, watching rise up kind of these common choral notes is just a really tremendous and powerful process. That's I think what we're trying to do today is float a few words out there and and note the resonances and the uniqueness of each of the voices that we're here to show. Thank you, Kate. That was lovely. Um so we are so we should be hearing from from three additional poets from the collection today. Robert Givens um Abby Russell and uh, Crystal Davis, but I just see Robert and Abby here. So um, I'm going to bring them on on screen, and then I'm going to introduce I'm going to introduce them. Oh, here they are. Um, and then I'll I'll say you know I'll, I'll give the the order of appearance, and then um, we'll just get into it. In the middle, Kate and I are going to do I'm going to read back and forth. So Kate's going to read a poem, and then I'm going to read a poem, and I think we'll have time enough. Robert and Abby, we might have time for you. You know, we talked. You're going to read two poems. We might have time at the end for you to read another one if you if you if you want to, if you want to. So um, bear with me as I do the spotlighting and spotlighting. I'm gonna Kate. I'll, we'll see you in just a little bit. Um, and Abby, hello. So I want to introduce. Um, Robert Anthony Givens. Hi, Robert. Robert Anthony Givens has been nominated for a push card and published in hundreds of literary magazines and in several anthologies. Recent publications include The Killens Review, Tribes, Involuntary Magazine, Peregrine, Expound, Promethean, Turtle Island Quarterly, um, The Bronx Memoir Project, and his first collection, Close to the Trees, was published by Three Rooms Press in 2012. And his chapbook, Flight, um, published by Poets Wear Prada, was was uh, came out in 2019. So welcome, Robert. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the rewilding uh, conference. You know, the workshop this morning was amazing. And I'm very proud to be a part of this cohort and also to be published in this journal. It means a lot to me and my work. I'm just going to start. You said we get a chance to read one now and one later or two now and one maybe one later. You can go ahead and read two. And I see that that um, that Crystal's here. Crystal, if you want to turn your camera on so folks can just see you first and then and then when it's time for you to. Hi, Crystal, I'll put you, bring you up here. I just want to introduce my work by saying I stand on the land that is unseated. I'm here in Brooklyn. Ancestral, the homeland of the um, Musi Lenape, Delaware people. As a sign of respect, I recognize and honor the Lenape nation, their elders past and present, and for the future generation. And I, I am committed to addressing exclusion and erasure of indigenous people and confronting the legacy of white supremacy. I'm gonna read a poem from my book called Sestina, and I'll read, I'll read the poem that's published here. Sestina, it's only one hour until I board. I wanna get there to the other end to make Pacific time. And there it is above me, my longitude and latitude packed, my bags, I am tagged like a tat as I sit between unknown people. Some too big because I want the Tacoma sun. I want the red of mestizo brick the pinprick sun of a Sitka spruce and to follow the river there when I touch down on Walla Walla, big corner of the universe, a burst that is fog and lighthouse, 
not smog that sits as in a skyscraper, but tapers the evergreen packed while salmon snake up river, packed with the wishwam man and his papoose. The sun makes me lose my nativism as I sit like a caboose. I want to see oddities there, antiquities as bleak as the forest is. I want to pick cherries in the Draper Valley. Big bowl women ride yellow bicycles, big gourmet trucks make me not rush, not a packed subway train, but the smell of rain is there in the state of Oregon in <clears throat> Sun River when I touch down on Walla Walla and there is Georgia O'Keeffe to follow, cow skulls sit from 1933. I want to be as old as gold. I want to sit like a tumbleweed. I want to see the colors of Mardi Gras, big as Lincoln's Oregon Oak. I want to find N.C. Wyeth there and Robert Colescott when I touch down, packed with kayak on the Willamette River. Forage me, son, when I commune with the octopus tree as sacred as time is. Convince me that to be transcontinental is to be traveled as the railroad. I want to sit like a carpetbagger, a swagger of tonic. The sun is fresh air. The God-given big nest of earth freshly packed. My moon river finally made it there. Yes, I finally made it there. My next poem is entitled James Baldwin on Madison Avenue. Sorry, James Baldwin. I could not afford that rare book on Madison Avenue. I could not afford the blues for Mr. Charlie. I could not sell my soul to be published, could not only going home on the long train, but the words of Winston Churchill and the Morgan and the buildings in front of foraging, I could not afford their price, could never be so concise, but cannot pay the cost, could not but only walk. So they call it a rare book in the window, wrapped in plastic. I could not afford the preservation paper. I could not assume the weather if this means anything but sorry, James. I'm taking the long train home. All the croons and moans. Yes, James, I'm taking the long train home. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. That Sestina was fire. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, Welcome, Crystal. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, we're gonna actually hear from everyone and then and then Kate and I will do our back and forth because it just it just seems right. <laughs> we just made that decision just now. Just seems right. Evie, are you ready? Can I introduce you? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and everyone, please feel free to drop comments, drop love into the chat as folks are reading. Um, I want to introduce folks to Evie Russell. They are a US born black queer femme, um, a self-taught art artist whose writing, choreography and vis visual art is heavily rooted in African diasporic movements, belief in time travel and exploration of how dance can address, heal and honor intergenerational trauma and chronic illness. Ebi is also a teaching artist who designs zines and workshops with young people and community members in and around their, uh, where they're living in Western Massachusetts. Evie, whatever, Evie, whatever you want to say and get us into your work. Yes, thank you so much, Samara. Um, and thank you to all the organizers of this festival. I'm really excited to be here. Um, this uh, collection of From Root to Seed is the first time that I've been published as a poet. So it's very exciting. Um, and this is also the first time I've done a group reading. So a lot of firsts here. So <laughs> thank you all for, for joining me. Um, uh, I would like to start with the poem that one of the poems that appeared in the anthology from Root to Seed, and then I'll read a couple other poems um, that are yet to be published. So the first one is called A Place in Nature, A Place in a Natural Body. Does it feel right? Does it flow? What odds am I working against? What do I know? What can I trust myself to remember? Earlier this year, I remembered how to swim while lying prone on the chiropractic table. Anchor, boat, buoy, fish, ship, an arrow twisting, afraid of stretching to the fullness of my limbs. Must extend, must unfurl, 
must untangle the numerous dreams in which I'm afraid of flying, drowning. What shapes must I take of my marine mammal ancestors? How can I undulate the knots in my spine, the twisting of my limbs? How do I too learn breathing underwater? How long till I remember this body belongs everywhere, on land, on sea, on God X, trust yourself to remember, to belong everywhere your ancestors have been and everywhere future kin have yet to see. And that particular poem, uh, as well as many of my other poems and writing are heavily influenced by uh, black feminist writer and poet, Alexis Pauline Gums. Uh, so whenever, whenever I can, I will always shout out <laughs> the black feminist um, authors, poets, and artists that have inspired me um, in my work. Um, and then the next couple poems, I'll just do two because they're short. Um, since we're in this season of autumn, uh, I will share one called Fallen and then the other one called Fall. Uh, Fallen. Were you right side up or did the blood rush to your weight? Do you even know where you're headed? Don't be a new sand. Did your neck snap or did you stick it out for a stranger who too was seeking solace? Sharing loaves, shaking leaves, struggling off loads, shedding old clothes, breaking new skin. Brethren, who let you in and shall we gather grinning widely? Slurping slowly, sipping a suggestion over cauldrons of cider, apple and fire telling tales left trails of ghosts who generate heat. Don't sweat it. What is left unspoken when? Baby, were you right side up? And how do you wind up with that wound? Um, that was one I wrote recently that was kind of fun that I was doing a little bit more experimentation. With. And then the third poem I'll share, which is very short and sweet, is entitled Fall. This is the season where the great suffering dies and with open arms, the skies extend to all shades and selves of you, baby to midnight blue. You've righted yourself through rites of mourning, held fast to owning your right to mourning, no longer asking who owns the rights to mourning. Who will perform the rites of mourning in the season where the great suffering dies and with open arms, the skies extend to all shades and selves of you, baby to midnight blue. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Um, I'm so glad you mentioned Alexis, was it Dr. Mother Alexis Pauline Gums? Because when you said that line about learning to breathe underwater, I just was like, that just feels like undrowned to me, which is if folks here don't know undrowned, everyone should read it. It is beautiful and powerful. And um your second poem, I cannot remember the title, but I'm just really was, I just love the way it ended. How did you wind up with that wound? I love that ending. Thank you, thank you. Crystal, you ready? So Crystal, um, um, if you wanna share two poems or th you know three short ones, and then I think there might be time for another one at the, after, at the end there. So, um, but I, let me introduce you. So Crystal Davis is a multidisciplinary and mixed media performance artist, poet, painter, freelance writer, editor, and social media marketer. She was born and raised in Jersey City, New Jersey, and is the author and creator at Crystal Letters and the, the co-founder and co-producer of Open Road Poetry. She has collaborated with arts nonprofit organizations and artists nationally and internationally. Her work is inspired by nature, color, and the utilization of practical craft through art in the visual and written form. Welcome, Crystal. Whatever you want to share about your work before you get into it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sama. And thank you uh, for having me a part of this. I'm super excited to just be a part of the anthology, and I'm excited to be a part of the festival. I'm looking forward to this for since you guys started sending the emails back and forth. Um, so uh, just like Sama said from my bio, um, a lot of my poetry re revolves around um, the elements, um, and I'm going to be reading the piece from Root to Seed, and this is from the water chapter of my book. Um, so I recently published my first book of artwork and poetry um, this past December, 
and yeah, I just um I'm I'm really excited to be here. And my presentation is actually going to be a little different. Um, I have some artwork from the book that I just present alongside with the poem. So just bear with me one moment. Get this started. One, three, two, one. A level gap. Water spirit sailing through waters like a scaly sea dragon. As he shimmers from light, from sunlight's refraction, elevated through waves, exalted by living waters, praised by flowing rivers, running deep within the celest celestial ocean. He governs the rain, the springs, the lakes, and the stream. His words his wise words carry through the rivers, throughout the seas. Undines swim around river bends, playing in water, curving like silk scarves designed of stained glass. Impressions of sea foam, wishing stones and peacock feathers, drenched after sun showered, tossing pebbles along the shore that passes between my toes. I dip my body in your fluid ecosystem, becoming one with your earth. And since you said I can read another short piece, I'm also going to read Mouth. And this is from the ether chapter of my book. Mouth. From my mouth, I have spoken truth. I was given the gift of storytelling, planted firm in the palm. I only played my role for the first half of my life. And so, I stepped from the stage, discarded the purse which barred me, removed my costume, destroyed my face. A mask we are all subjugated to wear so our lords and ladies are happy. Would-be. I was a would-be artist, would-be writer, nurse, mother, muse, sister, lover, brother, and other storming across the stage. In all forms of my past, each footstep echoing after the next until I was buried, the word spelled, until I had evolved, the word written, until I was born, the word spoken. I told this story again and again, the next time with less fear and more nerve, until I became. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. You're, you're our really really beautiful yes as you said it pales paired so beautifully with the words thank you for that um uh i will i'm gonna read one of my poems from the um from the collection and then i'll and i'll check in with with the poets here to see if they had if they had another piece that they wanted to read before kate and i got started um so i'm gonna read a poem called um late autumn observing the coastline of Beals Island and Beals Island is um up here where I live um if you've heard of the Great Wasp it's it's the island like right before the Great Wasp um it's really beautiful I would say that's in what we call the region of the, we call that region um down east so down east Maine so this poem is called late autumn observing the coastline of Beals Island where the rocky coastline meets the forest, there are places where the roots of trees cling to boulders, twisting and joining, threading themselves through one another. I want to call this a congregation, a place of testifying to strength and the near impossibility of roots siphoning water from stones, spirit work. No matter how tall or keeled over by the elements, roots join knuckle to knuckle, telling stories of erosion and of days past, of the shoreline that used to be crumbled, of the legs of relatives who used to stride and skirt the edges vanished now. 
Tree limbs and arms thrust high, high, fingers bare, tense and taut, fanning out in all directions like a scene of liberation. I want to call this a ululation. A moment of lifting up pray up a moment of lifting up in praise and shaking off when the winds barrel through and say it is time. Sacrificial. To give up all adornment and color and to be seen, vulnerable in praise, fully open in adoration of themselves, of each other. Thank you. Uh, yes, right. I that, I love that word, ululate. I always have trouble saying it, but I love it so much. Both in like, uh, both in action and in you know, I just love it. Um, do you, did you have a poem in your back pockets that you want to share? Okay, let's just okay. Can we just go on the same one? So Robert, and then and then um, Ebby, and then Crystal. All right, Robert. Thank you so much. I um, really appreciate what I've heard so far. And, 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 and thank you for allowing me to read with two wonderful poets. Thank you so much. I'm working on a manuscript called Dear Allo. And this is the first sequence of that piece, that manuscript, Dear Allo. Dear Allo, I could be reborn here. I was old and new. The blue I saw in the infinite atmosphere the palais of chrysanthemums and bluebells, I could tell it would be intimate and personal. If I could, I would be a cucumber that lumbers there to be picked with its hair follicles on its back when food is under attack. When it is used for the political, the juridical with styrofoam or plastic. There was this kind of monastic dynasty waiting for the train or ambulance or causeway, but the collard greens did not shun the camera, but it obscures the media that feeds this poverty, the lobby of okra and corn born here, that every man and every woman can consume and be healthy to have room to be debt free. I want to be organic, gluten or vegan like the soil. The soil beckons me as smoke as a compost heap helps keep the earthworms and the burnt ends of this leafy variety. Thank you. I love that, Robert. And now I'm hungry. I'm craving collard greens. I'm craving corn and okra. I'm craving like going back to the South and the, yeah. Uh, so that was beautiful. Thank you. Um, I would like to share uh, a poem I recently have been working on Blessings to Archive, with archive being spelled O-U-R-Chive instead of R, the traditional A-R-C-I-V-E. Blessings to Archive, one, invoke. Your realness, your resilience, your will, your fight. Come with the magic inside come with the moonlight. Stories you cradle and crave, our creation takes flight. Two, document. Something I wrote the other day totally made me cry. Bless this act of life giving to paper, lest I would have died. We wrote it down, preserved it, sang blatantly off key. We clapped our palms in unison. We sanctified the we. <laughs> And skip the cracks, mom still broke their backs, cops don't know who we be. We played it loud, drew a crowd, electric with a slide. We be bop bop and dot dot dot, resisted and we wide. We waited in the water, we waited 40 in a mule. We sang our souls to solace, cause mama didn't raise no fool. We wondered when we'd see it, this promise of victory. We leaped in ocean swimming. We flew over straining seas. We undrowned and uprooted, unbothered in our seats. We brought a chair and greased our hair, made meaning of our time. We lived lives long and loving ourselves into the sublime. That was really beautiful, Abby. Um, and I hope you don't mind. I do have another presentation that goes along with this piece. Um, I've been working on this for the past few months. It's about my ancestors, um, and the piece is called Ancestors.
ancestors. My ancestor was tall, intelligent, a chemist, apothecary filled with earth's gifts, oils, tinctures, dyes, stone fashion amulets carrying a scarab by your side. My ancestor was young, a twin, woman warrior. She was a brazen spiritual chieftain. She and her husband built the foundation of our lineage. In ceremonial clothing, my family would gather to commemorate the native marriage in its honor. My ancestors were bound in chains. My ancestors were their landlord's very last name, building railroad tracks and selling tea and grain. Together, my ancestors danced around open flames and chanted as they asked for rain. The moon rose high above them. The stars were guiding lights. The woodwinds called for more movement and they danced to summon the spirits to protect them. Fast forward to the year 1920, my ancestors gave birth to a badass, Nanny, with a great big attitude. She had style, she had spunk. She could teach you a thing or two. Carrot cake, a flavor you'll never taste twice. Frank Sinatra and Eartha Kitt are symbolic of her power. My ancestors gifted us Larry. He was the man with the golden thumb, playing roulette, rolling dice across green felt, five and tens of thousands right before your eyes. Two daughters and two sons, creating a legacy for this golden one, writing the unfinished story of his life energetically present, leaving behind traces of effervescent light. We've connected through divination, despite everything and being divided by more than land and sea. I still hear you, you still hear me, except this time your energies run free and rampant through me, guiding me to the next chapter. Oh, Crystal, Crystal, thank you. I'm so glad that there was time for, for that. Thank you, As thank, yes, thank you for inviting us into your, your personal story. Those pictures were beautiful and powerful and um, I just really so appreciated that. That was so moving and so powerful and uh, just, a, just, just a beautiful invocation. Thank you. Um, Thank you all to all three of you. Um, I just want to say that this putting this book together was such a, um, a labor of love, um, and you can tell that from the from the folks who shared today. Um, I got to read through all sorts of powerful, powerful pieces, and um, you know it was hard work because because so many people in the in the collection have so much to say and um i wanted to find ways to make sure that 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 they would have space to say all that they wanted to say in this in this in this book so um please encourage other people to go out and buy the book it's a really beautiful book it's a beautiful cover but the words inside will touch you very very deeply and thank you robert thank you ebby and thank you crystal um all right, I am gonna, okay, this is gonna be slightly clunky because I'm gonna start removing spotlights and bringing you back. So um, those folks will still be here with us, but now you're just gonna be focusing on me and Kate's big faces. That's it. <laughs> Hello again, Kate. Oh, you are on mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah classy. Hello. Hey, um, we've got time. I don't know that we're going to need, we we could go, we don't need the whole 30, we can take as much time as we want, as long as we end by 3.30, yes? 
Can I make a request? Yes. I would love to throw some words out there and right. give Robert, Evie, and Crystal like 15, 20 minutes to go find like one last thing. One last poem, yeah. And then maybe we can close by heading back to like Robert, Evie, and Crystal for like one last like little sparkle before we go. Yes. Does that yeah. seem crazy or does that seem like something we can do? It was beautiful. Like Kate okay. and I read together. We have read together, we've had opportunity to read together many times. So yes, um, I think that's beautiful. Do you want to do that? You have words? Oh, yeah. Right. Go for it. I'm going to write them down so I can also be inspired. So like, I mean, this is the thing, right? You prepare your set list before you come and do a presentation mm -hmm. and then everybody puts their magic out there and everything goes flying out the window. At least this is my practice, right? Because there were so many strands from that where I was just like, ah, oh, you know, strands of ancestry and strands of like deep knowing and everybody's words were so magical, right? It just makes me want to read like all the magical stuff. Do you want me to lead off with one? Yeah. Yes, please. Please, please, please. Okay. I think I'm going to do the title poem from the from um, Land Trust from this collection because it is a little magical. Maybe this will get us going. I mean, because I'm pondering, right? I'm pondering like anytime you start to listen to land and speak to land and be in that place, things go to this depth or to this level. I don't know. There's something there, right? Someone wiser than me has an answer why that's so. But this poem is called Land Trust. And it's a practice. It's sort of, it. this is what the Writing the Land Project inspired in me, a poetic practice. This is the magic. You walk the land, take nothing, not even your eyes. You must close them until there is no looking, only darkness like an open hand. This is the magic. Place one foot in front of another like a trail blazed on your bones. Embrace wandering. Some iron in the blood leaves you safe home. This is the magic. The treasured knife, the mica stone. Above you, sky unrolls a merry shawl of blue to hold them. This is the magic. Every light ray pressed to your heart like a lover. Every new bud leaf. Like you, it will fall. Like you, it will come back changed. Mm, Kate, thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, thank you, Kate. So I, um, when Kate and I talked about this and when we've read before, we were like, we have some things. And as she said, you just kind of try to get inspired. So I had really only one poem that I was like, oh, I want to read this poem. I just wanted to wait to see what Kate read to see what came up for me. So um, I'm going to read this poem called Morse Codes. Um, it's about fireflies. Oh, I love <laughs> Morse Codes. I miss fireflies. Not even the grand orchestral synchronicity of them in that dark Midwestern field off that rural road, I'd never let my brown skin travel down alone. No, I miss the singular lazy phenomenon of them when they come to rest in the tiny crater cup of your two hands, and when they alight on the stretched out webbing between a thumb and a forefinger. I sit outside in the cooled off night air and when I close my eyes, I see the slow settling of elytra that shelters the wings and underneath their gradual throb of light. I used to wonder about Morse code. Imagine me small and brown gazing up at the night sky. I knew all of the constellations that could be seen from our apartment complex parking lot. I am retelling stories of the stars to my father with twinkling eye, with twinkling lights suspended in front of my face and dancing around my small, excited hands. I am feeling deeply. Neurons whispering energetically, and I am wondering if the small lights around me are speaking in code, telling their own stories to the stars above me. What do you have, Kate? <laughs> you know, I have a firefly poem. Ooh, do you have it <laughs> yeah i do i mean it's not in land trust but i mean why not right um i don't think it's as beautiful as yours but so the the entry into the poem is a bunch of different names of fireworks so if you hear something you don't understand it's a it's the name of a firework it turns out they have all sorts of different names 
And the poem happened because the last time I actually saw a firefly, because as you know, like this is like a rare thing these days, was right in the middle of the 4th of July fireworks this year. So that contrast spoke to me. The firework we love best isn't time rain, willow, purple peony, orange torbillion, their pyrotechnic stars, isn't Catherine wheel ground display, crackle hummer wine, isn't the sparkler a neighbor has handed us, isn't grand finale ring of smiles, just you, firefly, glow beetle, dazzle miracle drawn to burn, courting explosion, ignorant of extinction, perchlorate salt heavy metals, you think yourself among friends. If this is our flame test, what will we discover? Fuel, oxidizer, tears, what binder to hold us all to our camp chairs? This world, one hand, another. The brightest mag stars are only aluminum. Two metals meet, combine, add oxygen, hit the trigger on the breakout box. Black shadow, our bodies radiate. The heat all life holds in common must be something other than combustion. Cake, crisette, chrysanthemum, dahlia, diadem, fish, waterfall, or just a field we fallow for you. Let the long grass grow. Sow barley, harvest millet, bioluminescence, from the beginning, your cold light was green. Mm. Is that is that published, Kate? Is no, that, not yet. Not yet. Not That's yet. raw. Yeah, right. So as I already break the work, the rule of like reading raw work. That's what happens when you follow really good poets. You become fearless. <laughs> read what comes to you. Um, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to read something that's slightly. <laughs> That's slightly, I don't know. It's not funny, but it's something. It's something. Um, but the story behind this is that my partner, so you don't, you, you don't up here where I live, you, you, you can see whales, but you like, you have to go out. You have to like go and get on a boat and what have you. Um, but my partner went to the beach, not that far from me and saw a whale, which like, thoroughly irritated me because I was not the, like I was thoroughly like why do you get to to see a whale You're just walking you know so so and I um the only time I have seen I've only seen one whale in my life I saw I was in Cape Cod on I don't remember which beach it was maybe Truro Beach and um and uh we everybody we all saw a whale it was probably a um it was probably a right whale and in the distance but anyway so this this poem is called breaching the surface and it is um awaiting publication it should be out in the public in the obsidian journal i think next month obsidian um uh, uh journal of um african literature in the diaspora or something like that i can't remember what comes after the colon um this poem is called breaching the surface anything is possible not in a trust a law, God, Yahweh sort of way, but like anything. Your mama knowing you ate pork in the school cafeteria type anything. A white supremacist t reality TV star running an entire country type anything. Your best friend's cousin played the right numbers type anything. NASA using spacecrafts to redirect orbiting asteroids type anything. So when some stranger child sitting close to you on a beach points towards the water and yells, whale, you swallow your disbelief and you look. That poem makes me smile. Oh my gosh, that poem is great. Yeah, I love it. You swallow your disbelief and you look. Yeah. I'm dying to see a whale and no, I'm dying to see a moose. No. Nope. see a moose. Uh -huh. I mean, I've seen one like in the protected animal enclosure where they're rehabilitating them to like release them to the wild. Like I've got that, but still like no. So yeah. my two animals, my two animal encounters, I've got one about a squirrel and one about a shark. Anybody want to vote? They're Wait, both in land sharks. I go with the shark. I'm okay. more in the, yes, people. Okay. 
Okay. Here's the shark. So, you know, a lot of times as poets, you weave, right? You take the thing that really happened and then the poem kind of takes over and the thing that really happened grows and changes and adds dimension. Or sometimes it isn't the thing that happened to you, but the poem has you embody it. So it's very rarely that I write a poem where I'm like, oh no, this is like pretty much how it went down. And I have to tell you, this is pretty much how it went down. Um, So the poem is called, this one's in Landshut, Before Your Shiva, A Shark. Bald fisherman, bright hook, we flock like bait fish. See the sharp fin, see the dangled tooth, death like a kept promise at the end of an invisible line. It's just a baby, I say, an accident. The fisherman, hands flopping, lowers the shark back to breaking water. I watch its tail drag across the sand, a pictograph, a rune. It can't breathe, I say. Red pulse of the gill, my own exhale, a world without you, raw in heart. Bit by bit, we cut it free. My voice, pliers and belt knives, everything but the hook, impossibly sharp, a whole jaw lost to pain. Don't worry, the fisherman says. It will work its way out in time. Healing overtakes us. The ocean is half our blood. I gentle the shark as we finally cut it free. Each brutal wave, each shudder breath drags it back to shore. I need it to live for you. Swim the unfathomable dark with all the persistence life can muster. I need it to find its mother, some path beyond pain. The shark and I, in silhouette, one beach, one waning sandbar, my hand reaching out swings the shark wide like a silver rainbow over the water. No space between its wild motion and my own. Only what we have in common. Fight this breath, one sudden dive, and both are gone. Hmm. I remember reading that poem. I don't think I've ever heard you read it. I remember reading it and I for I told and it, I've forgotten about it until you just read it there. That actually happened. Okay. Yeah, it did. We were in North Carolina. It was my second cousin, Robin. You know, because it's like the age of Zoom, right? So you'd like mourn people on screens, which is yeah. crazed. And it's like, even in your, even in that like separation and desolation, you know, we all went to the beach because <laughs> I don't know, we had to like, and you get this, right? Like you had to put your feet in something, feel something real. Mm -hmm. And there this like little baby shark was. And I mean, my family was screaming at me, like, what are you doing? And I'm like picking up the shark and like... <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. putting your feet. You just have to put your feet in something. Yes. Um, Kate, how many more do you, so you went, so I'll do this one. And then how many to each of us after this one, each of us will read one more. Okay. Just thinking. Um, okay. This one is a, is a short one. It's not published anywhere, but I was just, um, it just, uh, what you were saying about just the water and the putting your feet in something. Um, and this is a poem called glossier of divination deep water and it uh and it came from a bunch of different places but um i have i am recently i've had an opportunity to visit one of the door uh the doors of no return the door doors of no return on the west coast of africa i was in senegal and went to gory island and so um this is short but it's a little bit like this um a little bit a little bit about that Glossary of divination, deep water. Stand at the doorway, knowing it is a graveyard, knowing they were lost there. You have been lost there. Salt heart, salt ocean can take all. The opposite of water is home. The opposite of grave is home. The opposite of sinking is home. 
Drowning requires an abdication of fractions. It is an exit. Whether you slowly step towards it or above it, surrender strength, sur strength, surrender strength. Ocean wants all. Sorry, that was a bit clunky. I've never read it out loud before. Oh my God, are you kidding me? That is not clunky at all. That is just, it's, that's holy. Like that's searing and just, yeah. We're supposed to have words as writers, right? Like I had nothing. Just like, it was perfect. It was perfect and heartbreaking. Not, yeah. I mean, it makes me want to read this one, which kind of does that thing, right? It talks about like exile and water. So one of those like weird things about where our world is, is like, somebody sent you a link and they're like, you should see this UCLA scholar present on Armenian dragon stones. So the Hagopian in my name is Armenian. And, you know, their cultural story is diasporic, right? You know, they were like kicked out. And, um, so, you know, you, you end up like not knowing a lot, right? When that goes down. And so like I was learning and I was learning about all the things that I didn't know. So the deal is, is V-Shop are these dragon stones and it looks, and nobody really knows, you know, they found these things up in the mountains and they think that these were like somehow signposts or guideposts to tell people where water was. So it's called V-Shop of the Armenian Mountains. My people built in circles. V-shop, dragonstone, water visa, fishtails signal wellspring, danger, ram's horns, spiral pasture, hope. There should be true naming. There should be a glossary of signs. Woman mountain to tell me with her red hands how to sanctify, how to make this earth my own. I know they buried them. When they faded, when direction failed, in their falling, temples to the stone, made vase, icon, shard, obsidian, scatter fragment dark like broken space, like jellyfish a swallowing, as if to return the stone to water, draw water from stone. Remember how Vishap fell to earth, made a path of his falling, carving canals of fresh water, cradling all the loss he found. In the meadow, only blue remaining, course of our lost wandering, echoes like a broken stone. Yes, Kate, yes. Thank you. I just think of... Um... Oh, what's this when when ma magma turns to rock that's what I think of when I read well, I don't remember what that's I feel like I just learned about that in in this course I'm taking I can't remember but I love that poem um okay this one this I'm this is our last one thank you for reading with me Kate <laughs> and we will do this again um and then we'll turn back to to Robert and Evie and Crystal so this last one I'm going to read Ebby, it might sound familiar to you. So um, I wrote this at a poetry retreat that I recently organized for um, for folks in to come up to this region. Um, and it's a poetry retreat for um, Black, Brown, and Indigenous folks um, with of marginalized gender identities. And um, uh, a friend of mine, a writer. Uh, uh, gave us this prompt called I am this miracle. Th that was the prompt, I am this miracle. And so this is a poem that I wrote. I'm reading it today because today is also my birthday in addition to this beautiful um, festival. And, you know, um, for many reasons I don't need to go into, there was not that long ago. Um, I was not sure how much longer I was gonna be here. So I'm just gonna read this poem because all of us are miracles. And right now I'm thinking about, about the miracle that I am. Um, so I'm this miracle. I am this miracle. And unfolding is to sheet as unfolding is to miracle. First heavy bodied, then it billows, which is exactly how I get here, how I got here, if you believe in narrative arcs. Once a man with the most capital of letters behind his name and unmoving lips looked me in the eye and told me, Your future is dead. 
He brought me cupped handfuls of round white pills to blur the cracked edges of the rest of my days, hands casting shadows on his good German shoes. But I am this miracle. And if my mouth can outlive my hands, which are just conduits for my brain, then who are you to mark out my calendar? I unfold flower. I unfurl fern. I persist. I persevere. If miracle can be a land formation, then it is this. Two giant cleft apart boulders just past the shoreline, joined in the middle by the most impossible of all trees. I have been to this place. I have seen this existence. I am this miracle. Thank you, thank you. Um, I am going to, let me just get some nodding from Robert, Crystal, Abby, you wanna share another? Yes, okay. All right, then I'm gonna, give me a second. We're gonna do some awkward things. As I add and add, and I don't need to be, up there. Um, let's just go in the same order, Robert, Abby, and Crystal, to keep it. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm so impressed. Happy birthday. And thank you so much for that Armenian, because I have some great friends. So I align with the Armenian community here in New York. So I have lots of friends that are Armenian. So the title of this last is from the back to my aloe sequence. It's called The Human Condition, The Notes on the Human Condition. The aloe is African, it, particularly south of the equator, Malagasy and Arabia, where they grow in arid and semi-desert areas, often among or beneath sparse scrub. Dear Aloe, I remember you, the wicked way you spiral through air like flames. I could name you calamine or liniment. One summer I lived in the tenement of my body, a boy enthralled with a motorcycle. I rifled through the countryside of the Bahamas. My mama had allowed me to go on vacation. I raided through the countryside with a motorcade of other boys. Boys bent curves, boys swirled the mountainside. Dear Aloe, all of a sudden, I acrobat in the air. My flimsy threadbare body lay on earth, the tail piped of the cycle made me ripe to burn. My flesh lay prostrate as I wept. I am wilted aloe and sometimes torched my leg. I begged to be free. My flesh needs to mend a cool. I became a spool of insecurity. The skin was dehuman. The skin once a blackened trout. Now as albino white as someone has picked the flesh of a whiting flesh, dear aloe. Mama waited for my return to recognize the burn, a thousand burns like 1,000 lakes. I quaked from the terror. I have earned the right to wear melanin aloe. Dear aloe, she went to her backyard, withdrew her bounty and found your jelly and began to heal me. Aloe, we are humans, but be be below your energy with all your vitamins. Dear aloe, all the years of cough syrup, and mixes of castor oil and cod liver and aloe in this garden. Today, I will remember you. Thank you so much for having me. Beautiful. Um, I switched it up the last minute. I'm gonna read this other one um, called, I know a place, I'll take you there. Thank you, Mavis. I want to return to the time and place when every day was an offering, the place where we created our own queer rituals. We began again. The air filter is ready. The tea selection is ready. I am ready. Won't you join? <clears throat> There's so much lingering in these weary bones. Is that where the longing is? There's so much longing lingering in these weary bones. Is that where the longing is? The bones, the fast shoot? Tissues, nerves, feet. Is the longing unavoidable? Can't be beat. Stuck on loop, stuck on repeat. Click refresh scroll. Hyped on caffeine, low on self-esteem. Click refresh scroll. Stuck on loop, stuck on repeat. This is not a portal, but I'm hoping for one. Can't you see? In other words, I'm lonely. I miss you. Can we meet? On the dance floor, round the table, 
talk about what makes living feel complete and maybe I can orbit around you for however long the while. I want to return to the time and place when every day was an offering, the place where we created our own queer rituals. We began again. Thank you. I just wanted to let you all know that I'm I'm really happy that I had a chance to read with you all today and to listen to your pieces. I'm really grateful. Um, so Sama, this one's for you. A happy birthday. Abundance. Smoothing, crushing, cacao beans, the smell of chocolate in the air. The sun has risen in the east, guided by the blue light of the sky that surrounds us. A gold sheen cast on everything across the horizon. You can hear the birds cheer for more. The world is bright. Can't you hear it singing to you? Yellow sunflowers move in the waves. The air floats on like the tides. The shore filled with waves of summer heat. Cicadas in the distance still singing to you. Can you hear them? Don't you feel your wealth? Wealth of knowledge. An overflowing cavern, an oasis in the middle of dry land. Everything you could ever want in the palm of your hands. Corn that you've grown, pages that you've churned out. Letters inked at your pleasure, love flourishing at every twist and turn. Even when the sun sets, you can still see it in the shine of the moon as it illuminates the ground, glittering like the silver of your soul, moist at the stem and the root, hearty and whole. Can you feel it fill your heart? Can you feel it vibrating through your body? Can't you feel your abundance? Thank you. So I'm, I'm going to have to leave because I'm in the library and my time is up. So I thank you all so much for being with me, for, for allowing me this moment. All right. And I'll see you all tomorrow for those of you that attend the workshop. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you all for hanging with us. Um, please get this book and please get Land Trust. Kate, you want to show your book really quickly? Do you, can you please go out and get from root to seed? Please go out and get yes. Land Trust. You all. Thank Lee. you. Thank Lee. you, Lise. Thank you, Sama. Thank you, Robert, Crystal, and Evie. Thank you all. This has been really a wonderful reading, and I'm, I'm so grateful to you for being here and for sharing your work.